morning, sir, and really grateful to you for introducing us and through me, the Assam Rifles, to the audience. And right in the beginning, I would also like to convey the gratitude of the entire fraternity of Assam Rifles to all the viewers and listeners of this event, the first of its kind Thank for the Assam Rifles. Indeed, grateful to you. I, on behalf of the entire Assam Rifles family, if I may say, the family of veterans of Assam Rifles, as also the serving soldiers of Assam Rifles, express a gratitude and indebtedness to General Bikram Singh, the former Chief of Army Staff and the Chairman Chief of Staff Committee, for having accepted very graciously our offer to deliver this introductory talk on this subject. I'm sure with his resplendent eloquence and brilliance in oratory skills, suitably laced with vast experience in the Northeast, firstly as a GOC in C Eastern Command, and then where he closely watched and saw the Assam Rifles activities, and thereafter certainly as a Chief and Chairman Chief of Staff Committee. He has abundant experience for the Northeast, and we couldn't have found a better speaker to talk of a subject which is not only close to us in the Sam Rifles, that is the Act East, but also close to the entire country today of how to act East, how to further the interests of India in the Eastern side. Allow me also to express my gratitude to General B.K. Sharma, the Director USI, and the entire establishment of USI. Without you, I don't think we would have got this platform of coming back into the capital firstly, that's the capital of the country, and from this podium, thereafter convey what we do, thereafter let the environment know the alpha and omega of, of Assam Rifles, and what Assam Rifle does to contribute towards the national security and the national prosperity, if I may say so. The subject you all know is Assam Rifles' role in the Act East policy. <clears throat> While we say this, we cannot be oblivious of the fact that the primary role of Assam Rifles stays as border guarding and the Northeast security calculus, not only in terms of border guarding, but also the border defense and the border management, CICT, etc. So in the backdrop of all this, how is it that this oldest paramilitary force can contribute towards the nation? And with USI, when we signed the memorandum of understanding, a large number of you may be thinking that what was the need of signing the MOU with USI? They start Well, it is the oldest paramilitary force signing an MOU with the oldest think tank in the country. And USI giving us a platform to bridge the gap between the Northeast and rest of the country. Through this platform, through the USI podium, we will be able to share with you all the role in Charter of Assam Rifles, the government policies that we push forward, and also the soft power pivot that Assam Rifles can render. This is the gap if we can bridge together. And just with them, least did we realize in the month of February, when we signed MOU, that we will be getting a platform on the e-media through the USI. We thought it will be a very small audience sitting inside an auditorium where we'll air our views. But here we are getting a vast platform to share the views. So we will together bring the socio-cultural dividend of the Northeast into the domain of the national mainstream and also let you know that how the Assam Rifle contributes in the national security environment. To that extent, I would rather say that before going any further, we need to have our empirical percepts very clear. Unfortunately, and I say it with conviction, that not very many in the country know that this is a force which has participated in almost every war which the country has fought. Barring Kargil, because we in army parlance don't treat Kargil as a war, it was just a skirmish which we handled at a very local level. So it has participated in World War I, World War II, in 62, 65, 71. And in fact, it was instrumental in the battle 
of Kohima and Battle of Imphal in Second World War. Besides that, we have rich experience in counterinsurgency operations, not only within the country, in Northeast and Jammu and Kashmir, but also in the peacekeeping mission in Sri Lanka. As we talk today, now also we have redeployed ourselves in JNK, not only as a battalion of our regular troops, but even our Maila contingents are today in JNK. So that is the footfall of Assam Rifles in terms of our rich experience. When we talk of its act of gallantry, it has had an unswerving consistency in its performance. The number of awards is what General B.K. had already quoted, but just to share with you even last year, that is this year in the month of January, is the Assam Rifles Unit in the Northeast, which earned a larger number of share of Chiefs of Army Staff citations and the GOCC citations than even the Army units. That is the kind of performance the Assam, Assam Rifle delivers. Another thing which at times pinches us, the people who are sitting in the Northeast, is the ubiquitous ignorance of the country about our actual Northeast. We somehow are ignorant about our Northeast also, least we talk about the lest we talk of the acting east further words. The Northeast, which the common of Indians, the common person understood, is the line of Avang, Tenga, Calcutta, etc., and passing to Guwahati or Geelong at best. This is what people perceive as the Northeast. And we call it as a perceived Northeast, there's a Sam rifle. It's deployed thousand kilometers east of Northeast. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the actual Northeast. That is the place from where we have to launch our Act East policy. That is the fulcrum on which will hinge the Act East policy of the country. And there are numerous challenges there. Just to quote the one which we face as Assam Rifles. As a border guarding force, there are a lot of other forces border guarding which are deployed on the western borders, northern borders. They are dealing with border guarding. Border defense is being taken care of in those areas by the Indian Army. Border management is taken care of by well-established network of civil machinery. But here, there is not a single trench on the borders. The Assam Rifle does border guarding, border defense, and border management along with the civil administration. So this is the kind of footfall of Assam Rifles. And perceived th threats are numerous. There are IIG camps, if we have some uh, kind of camps across on the Western Front. Similarly, we have Indian insurgent group camps across in the Eastern Theater, but less talked about. That is the kind of challenge. Thin deployment of Myanmar Army. We have open borders. Narcotics and illegal is very illegal smuggling in arms is very common. Just to share with you, in last about year and a half, we have a recovery to the tune of almost 1,000 crores. But again, it goes unnoticed. Our presence in the United Nations contingent, our presence we have today also, our Mahila soldiers getting deployed in the UN mission. Four of our soldiers have gone as a detachment. We have this year launched a disaster management battalion, and as we talk today, we have the first platoon of Mahila soldiers getting deployed in disaster management role. We also have a major share, almost 70% of the Assam rifle gets deployed in conventional operations in the Northeast. Again, lesson known fact, the commando platoon of Assam rifles won the All India Police Commando competition, wherein even the elite commandos of the NSG participated. That is the performance in our training achievements, activities, etc. You talked of you talk of the national pandemic, and we pitched in here with quarantine centers in remote areas. A unique umbrella campaign. We had already started the plasma donation camps and innovative ad advertisements and awareness campaigns with the men. So that is what we do for the Northeast. And this is not only here. We had already taken a step ahead in terms of acting East by being the first force to take the national Swachhata Vyan across in Myanmar and made them do this activity along with us. This is just a very basic example of how we can further the national policies. And there's a large number of other things which we can do as far as the 
furtherance of this policy is concerned. So the aim was through this platform, we will unravel the mystery that surrounds the Assam rifles. And rather than mystery, I would say, gross, it is the gross ignorance about this force, the oldest paramilitary force with almost 65,000 troops deployed pan northeast. Now, when we talk of today's talk, without going into too much of the subject as such, which definitely I would leave it to General Vikram to cover, but what is it we are finding questions and answers to those questions? What is it that the Assam Rifles can do in furthering the active policy of the government? Most of you would recall that the Honorable Prime Minister had said, and the Niti Aayog also speaks, that the four pillars of the activist policy are hinging on culture, purpose, connectivity, and capacity building. And somehow there, we are already doing all these activities in the Northeast. Sam Rifle is there as a socio-cultural amalgam of the Northeast and of people who are across. We are the pivot who can promote the soft power, infrastructural development activities, can be pushed to us. The regional security and stability, which is quintessentially basic for furthering any such policy, is to be rendered by us. So all these are the questions which are staring at us, and we will somehow look at the answers through General Vikram Singh today. We'll try and demystify Northeast, try and promote a lot of other activities. The Sam Rifle is the one who can harness youth instead of going westwards and going southwards into the heartland India, here is the youth we can harness and send them across as our investors and messengers in the Northeast, further East. So this is the kind of activities which Assam Rifles can pursue. So with this little backdrop of what we are, what we can do for the nation, I will now like to hand over the podium to General Bikram Singh, who will further edify and enlighten us with his rich experience. And I'm sure each one of us is going to get benefited from his thoughts and ideas, which further may force us to have some germinating idea, ideas germinating in our minds. Thanks to each one of you. Thank you very much. And over to General Vikram Singh. Over to you, sir.